What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Still here in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 30. And here in Ezekiel 30, we also get a, another look at Egypt. And what is uh, going to happen here in these last days with the United States. Because the United States is represented by Egypt, Tyre, uh, Babylon, Assyria, many scriptures and see God gives us the whole scenario of what is about to happen here in these last days before the tribulation time leading into the tribulation time and we just have to continue studying and through the Holy Spirit put the uh, puzzle pieces together it's all a big puzzle and um he doesn't give us the whole picture at once, but a little bit at a time, one, one piece at a time. So let's continue on. Here we are in Ezekiel 30. The word of Yahuwah came to me again, saying, Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus says the Lord God. Well, alas for the day. And the word alas means... Uh, it's uh, an expression of grief, pity, or concern. It's like saying, whoa. Like a warning. Will, alas for the day. For the day is near. Even the day of Yahuwah, the day of the Lord, is near. And it, it is near. It's near now. It will be a day of clouds, a time of doom for the nations, a day of clouds. And we know Jesus is going to come on the clouds. And we read here in Psalm 18. Starting in verse 12, actually. Uh, starting in verse 11, speaking about when Jesus comes on the clouds. He made darkness his hiding place, his canopy around him, darkness of waters, thick clouds of the skies. From the brightness before him passed his thick clouds, hailstones and coals of fire. So one more time, will, alas for the day, for the day is near, even the day of the Lord is near. It will be a day of clouds, a time of doom for the nations. A sword will come upon Egypt, and anguish will be in Ethiopia. And so, I have to do some more studying into Ethiopia, and some of these other nations that we're going to see here in a little bit, uh, to get a better understanding on, I mean, it's a lot to, uh, I, I, I got to figure out the correct understanding on, who these different nations represent here in these last days. And it's basically got to go back to see um, uh, where, I mean, because it all goes back to the sons of Noah, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. And uh, we'll look at that some more here in a minute. But um, basically with Gog and Magog, it's... Uh, I believe it's the sons of Japheth, like the family of Japheth, is most of them that's mentioned, or a lot of them that's mentioned. And um, we'll get back to that here in a little bit, but uh, Ethiopia, just like all these other nations, I believe, can uh, be represented, can represent the United States and nations, and God uses the, uses this type of language um this type of uh literature in a lot of the scriptures it'll say it'll say like two different nations or more than two different nations in a in a verse or in a couple of verses but it'll be referring to the same place and once you realize that you it, it makes sense like for instance with this a sword will come upon egypt and anguish will be in ethiopia anguish will be in egypt when the sword comes upon egypt and speaking about america
A sword will come upon Egypt and anguish will be in Ethiopia. When the slain fall in Egypt, they take away her wealth. I'm speaking of our America. When the slain fall in Egypt, they take away her wealth and her foundations are torn down. This place is going to be destroyed. Ethiopia, Put, Lud, all Arabia, Libya, and the people of the land that is in league will fall with them by the sword. So I'm going to read a few different translations of this verse. And these are some of the nations that, uh, like I said, I have to do some more studying into this, into these uh, different places before I can give a better ex explanation as to who this is actually speaking about. But, but we see that it's speaking about those who are allied with America. And those who are allied with America are going to fall at the same time as America. And so America will have no, Egypt will have no help. So let me read a couple other translations of this real quick. Of verse 5. Let's see. Uh, the NIV reads, Cush and Libya, Lydia and all of Arabia, Cub and the people of the covenant land, because that's the correct translation actually, the covenant, and the people of the covenant land will fall by the sword along with Egypt. The NLT says, uh, Ethiopia, Libya, Lydia, all of Arabia, and their other allies will be destroyed in that war. And some of these are the same nations that are in the Gog Magog War as well. The ESV says, Cush and Put and Lud and all of Arabia and Libya and all the people of that land that is in league shall fall with them by the sword. Let's see. The New King James Version says, Ethiopia, Libya, Lydia, and all the mingled people, Chub and all the men. Of the lands who are allies or who are allied shall fall with them by the sword. The HCSB says Cush, Put, and Lud, and all the various foreign troops, plus Libya and the men of the covenant land will fall by the sword among them. Uh, the Brenton Septuagint translation, uh, I've, this is my first time hearing about this translation, it says Persians and Cretans and Lydians and Libyans and all the mixed multitude and they, shall f and they of the children of my covenant shall fall by the sword therein. The CEV says, soldiers hired from Ethiopia, Libya, Lydia, Arabia, Cub, as well as from Israel, will die in that battle. And I'm going to just read one more. Well, actually, two more. Uh, the Good News Translation says, that war will also kill the soldiers hired, hired from Ethiopia, Libya, Lydia, Arabia, Cub, and even among my own people. And the ISV says, Ethiopia, Libya, the descendant, descendants of Lud, all those who have mixed themselves in Libya, along with everyone in the land of Israel who is in league with them, will die violently. So, anyone who has joined with America on, on this day. And uh, a lot of these are involved in the attack on Israel as well, which America is going to be a part of. So, back here to Ezekiel 30. Ethiopia put Lud. All Arabia, Libya, and the people of the land that is in league with them shall fall by the sword. Thus says Yahuwah, Indeed, those who support Egypt will fall, 
and the pride of her power will come down. The pride of her power. America is proud. America the Great. Proud to be an American. The pride of her power. Thus says the Lord. Indeed, those who support Egypt will fall, and the pride of her power will come down. From Migdal to Syene, they will fall within her by the sword, declares the Lord God. They will be desolate in the midst of desolated lands, and her cities in the midst of devastated cities. And they will know that I am Yahuwah when I set a fire in Egypt, and all her helpers are broken. So all the helpers of America, all, all the allies, are going to be broken as well. This attack on, on America, on Babylon, Egypt, they're not leaving any chances. It's going to be all out. And even the allies are going to get it. So they don't retaliate and don't um, try to stop it. And let's see. I have a lot of scriptures pulled up. Um, and a lot of the a lot of America's allies are actually uh are Euro European countries and this also goes back to uh Japheth. Uh let me pull up this this is a nineteen what did it say? Nineteen thirty five Bradford map of the ancient world and of the settlement of Noah's descendants and we see here one second. Ham that's here in the pink. Shem that's here in the Middle East and east of that. And all of Europe here is Japheth. And like I said, I got a lot more studying into this to do uh, concerning these nations and and where exactly it's speaking about in the end time prophecies. But uh, but some of America's allies uh, says here uh, places that America say is allies. Uh, number one on the list, Australia, actually. Australia, Canada, Britain, France, Ireland, Italy. See, a lot of, East, a lot of uh, European countries. Norway, Sweden, Germany, Switzerland, New Zealand, Netherlands, Denmark, Belgium. And... Uh, And also uh, concerning that last verse, it said, And they will know that I am Yahuwah when I set a fire in Egypt and all her helpers are broken. Set a fire in Egypt. And we read here in... Um, uh, Revelation chapter 18. Starting in verse 7. To the, degree, to the degree that she glorified herself and lived sensuously, to the same degree give her torment and mourning. For she says in her heart, I sit as a queen and I'm not a widow, and I will never see mourning. For this reason in one day her plagues will come, pestilence and mourning and famine, and she will be burned up with fire. For the Lord God who judges her is strong. And we also see in, uh, I believe, Revelation 17 mentions the ten kings will hate the whore and burn her with fire. And they will know that I am Yahuwah when I set a fire in Egypt and all her helpers are broken. On that day, Messengers will go forth from me. So on that day when it happens, we know uh, it's going to happen in one hour. 
One day, one hour. All out attack. See, people aren't... People don't realize what's coming upon this... I mean, not only this world, but especially this country. People don't get it. People don't realize that one hour, in one hour, Babylon is destroyed. In one hour. Completely destroyed, but we, we get another detail right here. On that day, messengers will go forth from me, from God, in ships to frighten, secure Ethiopia. And anguish will be on them as on the day of Egypt. For behold, it comes. So, when this day comes, God is going to have uh, one or many of the nations send out ships. The ships are going to be sent out toward America. On that day, messengers will go forth from me in ships to frighten secure Ethiopia. Speaking about America. The same as Egypt. And I'm going to read this also, this verse also in some other translations. But on that day, there's going to be ships sent out. And people are going to be like, Whoa, whoa, what's going on? Like, this is crazy. Uh, however it happens. I don't know how it's going to happen exactly. But messengers will go forth from me in ships to frighten secure Ethiopia. Secure. She says in her heart, I sit as a queen and I'm not a widow. As we just read in Revelation 18. So let me just read this in a couple of the translations. So that's going to be the warning, at least on that day. I mean, before then, we're going to know. We're going to know because, I mean, it's, it, stuff is going to be going down regardless. There's going to be, um, I believe, the 144,000 are going to be caught up before that time. And probably going to be aliens on the scene, or I mean, we know it's demons, but there's going to be some crazy stuff going on at that time. But on that day, there's going to be ships sent out to frighten, and it's going to frighten this country. And then in one hour, it's going to be completely destroyed. But let's go over here to. See, I got a lot of tabs pulled up, so. And a lot of them I'm not going to go through today. Just stuff I was looking at concerning this. But let me find this scripture Ezekiel 30, verse 9. Uh, the NIV reads On that day, messengers will go out for me in ships to frighten Cush out of her complacency. Anguish will take hold of them on the day of Egypt's doom, for, for it is sure to come. The NLT says, At that time I will send swift mes messengers. And that's also, uh, that maybe was, was spoken about, I think it's in Isaiah 20, or, or, chapter, or maybe chapter 18, about Ethiopia as well. And before I say, I mean, I, I believe here, at least here, uh, it's referring to Ethiopia as the same place, the United States. But uh, I do need to study into the, the Ethiopia thing more before I speak too much more on it, as well as uh, these other nations. The NLT says, At that time I will send swift messengers and ships to terrify the complacent Ethiopians. Great panic will come upon them on that day of Egypt's certain destruction. Watch for it. It is sure to come. The ESV says, On that day messengers shall go out for me in ships to terrify the unsuspecting people of Cush. And anguish shall come upon them on the day of Egypt's doom. For behold, it comes. 
uh, the Berean Study Bible says. Well, this is pretty much the same thing. Uh, the KJV says, uh, In that day shall messengers go forth from me in ships to make the careless Ethiopians afraid. And great pain shall come upon them, as in, it, as in a day of Egypt, for lo, it cometh. Care, the careless Ethiopians. This is what it says about Babylon. It's care, careless. Not worried about a thing. It's this country. Let's see. The HCSB says, On that day messengers will go out from me in ships to terrify confident Cush. Anguish will come over them on the day of Egypt's doom, for indeed it is coming. The Brenton Septuagint translation says, In that day shall messengers go forth, hasting to destroy Ethiopia utterly. And there shall be tumult among them in the day of Egypt, for behold it comes. And uh, the CEV says, On the same day that I destroy Egypt, I will send messengers to the Ethiopians to announce their coming destruction. They think they are safe, but they will be terrified. Man, mm. that's going to be the warning that day. Oh, man. But, I mean, the same time that happens, that's when everything happens. That's when Jesus comes on the clouds. That's when the sixth seal earthquake happens. That's when it all goes down. It's coming upon the whole world, but America gets a double destruction. Attacked from all sides by the, all these other nations and the wrath of God. Thus says the Lord God, I will also make the hordes of Egypt cease. Speaking about the people of this place, this country, cease by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon and it's not going to be see this was uh, Nebuchadnezzar in the past fulfillment it's not going to be actual Nebuchadnezzar but it's, about, it's going to be the king of Babylon and we also saw the king, king of Babylon in the last chapter and um, we're going to probably go back over to that uh, here in a little bit but let me continue on Thus says the Lord God, I will also make the hordes of Egypt cease by the hand of, hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. So the king of Babylon can be referring to the current king of Babylon, which would be Trump. Or, or the king of Babylon can be referring to uh, the Antichrist, which also comes out of this place, from my understanding. I believe it's, uh, I mean, I believe it's Jared Kushner. I believe it's President son in law That's who it's going to be. My, uh, that's, what, that's what I believe. Um, and so ultimately, so so basically the Antichrist is, I mean, they hate when I talk about this. I always get uh, uh, threatened and they hate me talking about the beast. But so the beast we read in the book of Revelation is um, Apollyon. Apollyon is the angel of the bottomless pit, the angel of the abyss. And Apollyon is also Apollyon. That's that's Baal. That's Osiris, Ra. That's Zeus. That's all these other gods that are mentioned in the Bible, Molet, all these other gods, that's Nimrod. It all goes back to Nimrod. And Nimrod was the one who was in charge in the original Babylon. At the Tower of Babel. And uh, 
I have this pulled up right here. It's off a uh, stack exchange. This says, uh, this comment on here, it says, the city known as Babylon was founded circa 2334 BCE around or before the reign of Sargon of Akkad. That's the Sargon of Akkad, that's Nimrod. Akkadian was the native language of the Mesopotamian, Mesopotamian nations at that time. The city, Babylon, became the largest in the world and the center of power under Hammurabi, uh, 1792 to 1750. And I'll just stop it there. But that's where Babylon comes from. Um, that's where the original Babylon was. There where the Tower of Babel was. And the leader then was Nimrod, the leader of the first world empire. And he's the leader of the last world empire. And so there's two beasts in Revelation. I believe they're both Nimrod somehow. The beast that comes out of the pit, I believe that's the that's the beast from the earth. And he comes out of the midpoint of the tribulation, but the one we know and as the false prophet. Uh, but the one we know is the Antichrist. I believe it's Kushner. But I believe it's also, so in some way, Nimrod as well. Genetic manipulation, I don't know exactly. But uh, I believe they're both Nimrod. Both beasts. And that goes also back to... Uh, back to all these other different... Uh, religions they have the two gods for example the Egyptians have uh, Ra and Osiris um, all these different pantheon of gods there's a two there's the father and the son basically and I believe it's going to be the same thing with uh, the two beasts in Revelation uh, basically two Nimrods so um But the point of going into that is uh, the king of Babylon can either be referring to the current king of Babylon, uh, more specifically America, or it can be referring to the Antichrist. And so what we're seeing here, let's go back to the scripture. Thus says the Lord God, I will also make the hordes of Egypt cease by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. He and his people with him. So. So I believe this is speaking about the Antichrist. Uh, rather than um, this, the Assyrian, rather than. The other king of Babylon, the current king of Babylon. And we're also going to see that here in the end of this chapter as well. Because the current king of Babylon is mentioned as Pharaoh in the last chapter and also in this chapter. We're going to see that here in a little bit. Thus says the Lord God, I'll also make the hordes of Egypt cease by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. He and his people with him. The most ruthless of the nations will be brought in to destroy the land. It's the attack on America. He and his people with him, the most ruthless of the nations, will be brought in to destroy the land. And they will draw their swords against Egypt and fill the land with the slain. Moreover, I will make the Nile canals dry. And remember the waters. Water represents people. The Nile represents... Uh, it's basically the people of America. Moreover, I will make the Nile canals dry and sell the land into the hands of evil men. And that's interesting because uh, we hear all these different reports about America being sold or part of America being sold to, for instance, China and maybe to other nations as well. I, the only one I've really heard specifically that I, I can recall is 
China. China buying, uh, it's believed that China owns part of California, uh, that maybe part of Texas. Um, but, um, but basically, uh, I mean, I, I believe it's probably all these nations, all these uh, leaders, these leaders who uh, who are going to rule with the Antichrist. I believe, I mean, it's being bought by the Beast Kingdom. America's being bought by the Beast Kingdom. But I don't know who specifically. I don't know which countries or which individuals specifically. But... Uh, like I said, the only one I've really uh, heard is mentioned is China. Moreover, I will make the Nile canals dry and sell the land into the hands of evil men. And I will make the land desolate and all that is in it by the hand of strangers. I, Yahuwah, have spoken. Thus says the Lord God. I will also destroy the idols and make the images cease from Memphis. So here, the idols, just think about the idols and the images. Um, and it mentions Memphis. So um, basically, we're, what we're going to see here in the next few lines is, is going to mention different cities of ancient Egypt. Memphis is one of them. And I believe it's prophesying about different cities here in America. And this would be an interesting study for the sake of this Bible study. Uh, I didn't study too deep into this. I, I wanted to go ahead and... Uh, God just let me go ahead and work with what I have right now. But it would be also be an interesting study to study into these different um, um, cities of Egypt mentioned here and how they correlate uh, with the different major cities in America and see which ones are talking about which ones because I believe it's talking about different major cities in America. And just because it says with Memphis, it mentions the idols and images that maybe that's referring to D.C. I'm not sure. But let me just uh, read through this but. Um, it mentions a few different ones, uh, a few different, uh, judgments coming on these different cities. Um, I don't know which is referring to which exactly, but that would be an interesting study. And, um, if I do look into it, I'll, um, let you guys know. Thus says the Lord God, I will also destroy the idols. And make the images cease from Memphis. And there will no longer be a prince in the land of Egypt. There will no longer be a prince. So, only the king. Basically, uh, I don't know if that, I don't know when this is going to happen. Um, no longer be a prince in the land of Egypt. Um... Yeah, I don't know how this is going to play out. You know, that may this may play out here very soon. You know, people believe uh, that, I mean, if, I mean, like I've said before, uh, from my understanding, this is Trump. He's going to stay in power. Uh, we'll see how everything plays out. And even if he goes out, of, even if he goes out of power for a little bit and maybe come back I, I don't know how it's all going to play out but from my understanding he will be in power when the uh, tribulation starts and um and it says there will no longer be a prince in the land of egypt just a king so how that how exactly that's going to play out what exactly this uh means specifically um i'm not sure And there will no longer be a prince in the land of Egypt. Which I would think would be like a vice president or other 
at the raw leaders under the the king, under the pharaoh, under the president. And I will no longer be a prince in the land of Egypt. And I will put fear in the land of Egypt. I will make pathros desolate, set a fire in Zoan, and execute judgments on Thebes. I will pour out my wrath on Sin, the stronghold of Egypt. I will also cut off the hordes of Thebes. I will set a fire in Egypt. Sin will writhe in anguish. Thebes will be breached and Memphis will have distresses daily. The young men of On and Pi Beseth will fall by the sword, and the women will go into captivity. In Tehaphnes, the day will be dark. So, the day will be dark. Actually, let, let me finish the sentence. In Tehaphnes, the day will be dark when I break there the yoke bars of Egypt. The yoke, the yoke of Egypt. That's the burden of Egypt. The burden that uh, that this nation has on all these other nations. The yoke bars, the the sanctions, the the pressure that uh, I mean, America even makes a basically charges that their allies to. Like money to <laughs> to to be allies. I mean, I, I don't I don't know too many details regarding all that, so I'm not gonna speak speak much on it. But the burden of Egypt, the burden of this nation on the rest of the world, on all these other countries. It says, "In Tehaphnes, the day will be dark when I break there the yoke bars of Egypt." And so the day will be dark. We we read here in um, Amos. Amos 8, chap chapter 8, verse 9. It will come about in that day, declares the Lord God, that I will make the sun go down at noon and make the earth dark in broad daylight. And to happiness, the day will be dark when I break there the yoke bars of Egypt. Then the pride of her power will cease in her. A cloud will cover her, and her daughters will go into captivity. So, this isn't referring to the captivity of believers, um, but it's speaking about captivity of Americans. Will will go will be taken and go into captivity, and also be scattered among the nations, as we read in the last chapter, and also here in a minute in this chapter. But the captivity of the of the believers happens, I believe, the ten days before this. It's already going to be going on. One more time. And to happiness, the day will be dark when I break there the yoke bars of Egypt. Then the pride of her power will cease in her. A cloud will cover her, and her daughters will go into captivity. Thus I will execute judgments on Egypt... And they will know that I am the Lord. They will know that I am Yahuwah. In the eleventh year, in the first month, on the seventh of the month. So, this is, uh, I believe this probably speaking about this year. I mean, it's eleventh year. Um, I mean, it's 2021, so it's eleventh year since 20, 2010. I mean, if you count by tens, it's the 11th year. In the 11th year, in the first month, on the 7th of the month, the word of Yahuwah came to me, saying, Son of man, I have broken the arm of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And behold, uh, so before I even continue, the first, uh, the seventh day of the first month, so the seventh day of the first month this year on the Gregorian calendar was the day after, um, if you remember, on the 6th. That's when, that was last week, that's when this riot happened at the Capitol. That's when he Trump was voted out, technically on the 7th, because it, it, they went into, they did it overnight. They, they worked all night. Um, or end of the night, 
into the early morning and declared that uh and declared that Biden uh won that declared that Biden won the election on the seventh of the first month. And it says in the eleventh year on the first month on the seventh of the month the word of Yahuwah came to me saying, Son of man, I have broken the arm of Pharaoh king of Egypt. And we're going to continue on here in a second, but if we go to the Hebrew calendar, the first day of the seventh month this year is March 20th. And, I mean, it almost seems like it's speaking about uh, last week, and, and it very well may be, I believe it's speaking about this year. Um, but, no, uh, March 20th is the... F seventh day of the first month on the Hebrew calendar and it's a week before Passover. Passover is the fourteenth day of the first month. In the eleventh year and the first month on the seventh of the month the word of Yahuwah came to me saying and it has to be this year. I mean I, I believe it is. I believe this year is when the tribulation starts. Um, but that's in God's hands. We'll see. In the eleventh year on the first month on the seventh of the month the word of Yahuwah came to me, saying, Son of man, I have broken the arm of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He's speaking about Trump, like I've said. And behold, it has not been bound up for healing or wrapped with a bandage, that it may be strong to hold the sword. That it may, may be strong to hold the sword. But he does still have another arm currently. And like I've said before, before this happens, um, I believe he's the, I mean, he's definitely this country and I believe he's the, the head of the, he's the uh, large horn on the goat in Daniel chapter 8. And I believe Daniel chapter 8, when that attack happens, I believe it's, it's right before the end. I believe there's 21 days left until the tribulation starts. You know, and maybe like a week and a half before the captivity and everything. Um, but I haven't, I don't have the timeline completely work, completely worked out concerning that yet. So one more time. Son of man, I have broken the arm of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And behold, it has not been bound up for healing or wrapped with a bandage that it may be strong to hold the sword. Therefore thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and I will break his arms, both the strong and the broken, and I will make the sword fall from his hand. And this is going to happen when he falls, when America falls, when Egypt falls. Behold, I am against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and I will break his arms, both the strong and the broken. And I will make the sword fall from his hand. I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and disperse them among the lands. For I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon and put my sword in his hand. So, this is what we're seeing here is the transfer of power. The transfer of power from the current leader of the major power in this world and and I believe the current leader of the beast kingdom. And we're going to see the transfer of power from him to the Antichrist. For I will strengthen the arms of... Uh, for I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon and put my sword in his hand. And I will break the arms of Pharaoh, so that he will groan before him with the groanings of a wounded man. Thus I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon, but the arms of Pharaoh will fall. Then they will know that I am Yahuwah, when I put my sword into the hands of the king of Babylon, and he stretches it out against the land of Egypt. Because it's the ten kings that, that, that destroy Babylon, that destroy the land of Egypt. 
It's the Antichrist and the Ten Kings. Well, maybe seven of the kings. I gotta, uh, I gotta think about that again, because uh, because three three of them fall, three of them fall, and I believe those three that fall are the two leaders of Persia, and the current, and the fall of Pharaoh here that we're we're seeing right here. That's the third that falls before the Antichrist, and he's the eighth of the last seven. Although there may be uh, a couple more pop up to make a ten, I gotta, I gotta look through it again. Then they will know that I am Yahuwah when I put my sword into the hands of the king of Babylon, and he stretches it out against the land of Egypt. When I scatter the Egyptians among the nations and disperse them among the lands, then they will know that I am the Lord, that I am Yahuwah. Judgment's coming. This is coming. This is all happening right now. This is all playing out right before our eyes. We just don't realize it. I mean, the Bible says in Matthew 25, it says all the virgins fell asleep. Speaking about all of us, we all fell asleep to the to what's going to what's actually going on, to the times we're living in, to the to the reality of all this. And it's it can be easy to fall asleep. I I fell asleep. But this is happening. <laughs> this is happening. And the way it looks, you know, I I'm not sure. May, that may, that may have been the fulfillment, because it was on the seventh. On the seventh, the day after the riots at the Capitol, or the going into the next day, because um, that was the sixth, and going into the seventh is when they made the decision final for Biden. And uh, but I don't think Biden is gonna. We'll see how everything plays out. But. Um, we see here what happens is is going to it's going to be the transfer of power from the current leader to the king of Babylon the antichrist so we'll see how everything plays out but we're we're living in these last days brothers and sisters the time is near very near all this is going to happen soon this talk, talking about the fall we're talking about the fall of this whole world really but the fall of this country completely the complete fall of this country is going to be horrible what's going to happen not only the wrath of god that's where every, every wall falls to the ground 100 pound hailstones everything just burn up we're talking about nuclear rockets flying in from everywhere we're talking about Complete destruction. Talking about a complete takeover and complete destruction. Going to be made desolate. The time is near. The time is very near. We need to be ready. We need to spread the gospel. We need to warn the people that this is going to happen. We need to warn the people that it's coming to judgment. The judgment of God. The judgment of God on a wicked nation is coming soon. We gotta let them know. We gotta warn the people. We gotta sound the alarm. If we don't, who will? Let's be ready. Let's walk in all his ways. Let's serve God with all our heart. Let's spread the gospel. Let's sound the alarm. Let's warn the people. Let's overcome. Make sure nothing's holding you back from the kingdom. Pray daily that you're found worthy to escape all the things coming upon this world and to stand before him. Let's serve him with all our heart. Let's have our hearts prepared for the coming of the Lord. He's coming soon. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, call out to him today.
We're living in the last days. There's not much time left. There's not much time left at all. The Bible tells us about the days we're living in. The Bible tells us what's going to happen before it happens so we can be prepared. And there are hundreds of Bible prophecies being fulfilled right now and in the process of being fulfilled here soon. Hundreds. The Bible tells us about the days we're living in. The Bible tells us what's going to happen and even when it's going to happen. God gives us a timeline. And that time marker, other than well, God has a 7,000 year plan for mankind, the last thousand years is uh, the millennial reign of Christ. And according to the Bible, the world is only 6,000 years old, almost exactly 6,000 years. But God had a time marker in Israel. The nation of Israel was re recreated in 1948. And Jesus said the final generation will not pass away until all these things are completed, until all these things are finished. Speaking about all, everything that's going to come upon this world. And according to Psalm 90, a generation is 70 years to 80 years, 80 years at the most. And from 1948, 80 years is 2028. And if you subtract a seven year tribulation from that, and more specifically, May 14th, 2028, you take away a seven year tribulation from that, you come up with May 14th, 2021. Is the end, is, uh, the 73 years going into the final seven before Jesus comes back and reigns here on earth. We're living in these last days. America is going to be destroyed. And this whole world is going to be shaken and laid waste. And then, then the devil and his angels and, and his demons are are gonna have have seven years to reign until uh, and it's gonna get, be and it's, see that's just the beginning. All everything that happens here at the begin at, at the beginning the everything that I've mentioned that's only the beginning, and then there's a, there's a seven years of tribulation, and then at the end Jesus comes back and reigns here for a thousand years. And there will be peace. There will be perfection in his kingdom. There's not much time left. This is all about to go down. So give your life to Jesus Christ. Turn to Jesus. See, the punishment for sin is death. And that's not this first physical death. That's the second death. Everyone's going to stand before God in judgment. And if you haven't had your sins forgiven, you're going to be thrown into the lake of fire. And that's the second death, death of body and soul, permanent death. God requires perfection in order to enter his kingdom, in order to live forever. And none of us are perfect. We all sin. So we can't earn our way to eternal life. We can't earn our way to the kingdom of heaven. And that's why Jesus came. Jesus lived a perfect life. He did nothing wrong. And in his perfection, even though he was perfect, he stood in the place for us. He got crucified for us. Took on the punishment for our sins. And because we can't earn it on our own, he did it for us. And it's through faith in him and what he did on the cross that we have our sins forgiven. That we receive his perfection. And are made right with God. That's the only way to be made right with God. That's the only possible way to be made right with God. Through faith in Jesus and what he did on the cross. So if you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And you call out to him to forgive you for your sins. And to save you. And you truly mean it. If you truly give your heart to Jesus. You truly give your life to Jesus. He'll forgive you. He'll save you. He'll give you the Holy Spirit, which will change you from the inside out. You don't have to change to turn to God. You turn to God and he changes you. 
and you won't want to be the same. He'll forgive you. He'll give you eternal life. See, the great thing about um, these last days is God's salvation. See, even though most people are going to reject God, and then they're going to suffer this first death, they're going to be resurrected to stand before God in judgment and suffer the second death in a lake of fire. But God gives us the opportunity to potentially not even die once. There are going to be many people here on this earth that are not even going to die once, that God is going to save away from his judgment. And God is going to catch some people... I'm going to take some people into his kingdom, away from the judgment that's coming upon this world, straight into eternal life, not even dying once. So incredible, so amazing, so gracious. Our God is the greatest. So don't reject him. Don't reject God. Don't reject your only chance at life. This is all going to go down, whether you like it or not, pretty soon. Most likely this year very soon so give your life to Jesus Christ today don't waste your opportunity you could be gone any day and you don't want to you, you don't want that opportunity to be lost anyone can be gone any day but regardless most of the world is going to be gone soon a quarter of the world dies that first day as a, as a result of what happens on that first day when everything breaks everything happens a quarter of the world, billions of people, are going to die when it all ha just happens, when it all first starts. Don't take your chances. Give your life to Jesus. That's the end of Ezekiel 30. Thank you guys for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.